Yo, what up dudes? Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going over some quick tips and tricks that Sway uses in his games. Now, Sway seems like an incredibly good player, but there's some core basics of his gameplay that I'm going to try to teach you guys today that I think would help you improve. For those who don't know, Sway is the number one. Apologies for the ranked or the ads on screen right now, but Sway is ranked number one in the world for both rank and and for kills, which is crazy. I'll talk a little bit later in the video why that's so impressive. But if you guys enjoy this, helps you out, drop a like on the video. Appreciate you very much. So the number one thing that I think Faceway does outstandingly well is his crosshair placement. What he does is as he's tracking players, he's always trying to keep his crosshair near to where they are. What this does, it basically reduces your reaction time, but it will also actually increase your aim assist. It doesn't really sound like it makes sense, but you'll actually get stronger aim assist from using this technique. Basically, by going into every fight, trying to get your crosshair near to where somebody is as best as possible, whether or not you're peeking around a wall or if you're actively editing on somebody, if you can have your crosshair close to them, it'll increase the likelihood that your aim assist will engage properly. And then you'll be able to track somebody well and hit your shots. So let's look at this really basic example right here. Sway is hearing a guy push up on him, drops down, gets a shot in. Again, that doesn't really matter too much, but he's got him hit for 82. Now, as he drops down right now, he's going to drop down right to height. And watch where he puts his character as he's entering the box. Watch where he's aiming as he enters it. He can kind of see the player uh, like right here, right here in the box. And so he's trying to face his way in, and as he gets in, that exact moment he gets in, his crosshair is, like, perfectly level. It's perfectly horizontal. I see people make this mistake a lot. Again, he's entering the box with his crosshair kind of right here in the middle of the screen. You can see it uh, right here. Now, he doesn't perfectly track the person, but he's really, really close. And so as he'll turn slightly to the right... Um, he'll be able to track right onto them. Again, he's just got to go this level of distance. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're looking at the entire screen, that's a lot of space, right? You'll see people coming into boxes sometimes, looking at the ground, looking up high, um, not really ready to actually respond to the engagement. And again, so he just needs to make a slight adjustment, and he just two taps them. Easy peasy, let me squeezy. Now, the next trick I want to point out that Sway does an incredibly good job of is overbuilding is kind of what people would used to call this. But in, in, in actuality, we've progressed to a point now where it's more like peace control. And so what Sway does is he basically gives himself the greatest chance to catch the other player in their builds by building out more uh, to create opportunity. So in this clip, he's not actually going to kill this player you see right here, but he's going to get hit up by another player and he's going to use peace control and a little bit of overbuilding uh, to make sure this, this player right here doesn't hurt him but taking out the other player. So this guy's kind of boxed against the zone. Again, he's moving out, just trying to get, again, that, like, pre-fire. He gets a little bit of peace control, sees the player backing out, and he knows he's getting pressed from another side. So he knows that this player that is over here is playing really passively. Seems like he's perfectly happy to just sit in zone. So Sway takes on the guy right here. That seems to be more of an aggressive target. He just rolled up in a vehicle. And so I think this is a good decision from Sway to take on this fight. So what he does, he moves up again, looking where the guy is, trying to get pre-fire in, has that brilliant crosshair placement as always. And now what he starts doing, he knows the player is right here, right? He's like right underneath this ramp. He already kind of stuffed them with this wall. What he's going to do is he's going to expand out and box up this area. Uh, just basically to try to stuff this player off, knowing that this player is running up here. He you know, thinks that he might try to move outwards. And so if he owns this box, this nice little home here, He's going to be able to just control the fight and box him up. So let's see what happens. So he moves out to try to box up, but the player cuts him off. He now knows that he owns, again, and this is one thing you know you need to really keep account of what you own in a build fight. He owns the cone and a floor because he was already trying to cone off this box, but didn't succeed. So now he, again, tries to expand out, controls more area, gets a shot in. Because he expanded out, before he actually engaged, he expanded out this box. So now he can just go and make the play from this box. He now owns the roof. He now owns the wall. He also owns over here. I think the only thing he doesn't own is the back side of the, of the, the box over on this side of it. 
So again, he drops down, makes the wall edit, makes this poor kid just sniff the wall and finishes him off real easy. So again, building out, taking control of the entire situation, owning all the builds around the player you're trying to aggress can help so much. And then as you get faster at editing, you'll get to a level like face way where you can just double edit, grab a wall, grab a window, grab a whatever you need and bop every single player. Another thing that Sway does out like absolutely outstandingly well, and you should try to implement in your own games is recognizing when a situation is bad and not egoing it, not taking it, instead choosing to deflect and turn it into a situation that better suits yourself. Um, it's sometimes easier said than done, but watch this example right here. He comes up on this player who he, he knows is in a bush. He can see that on the map uh, they are there's like a medallion and there's nowhere else for them to be. So he knows there has to be a player in this bush. He jumps on them. He recognizes the fact that I'm on controller. I don't have aim assist in bushes. Takes an absolute ridiculous amount of, of damage from an auto shotgun. And so instead of trying to just now take this ego fight and try to get a pump shotgun shot in, instead he cranks upwards. Um, basically delay the fight and then give himself more of an opportunity. Now that he's got space, right? This player underneath him thinks that he's lit. He thinks, okay, this is an easy bop. But because Sway's got given himself space, and because this guy's going to really ego challenge underneath him now, all of a sudden he can flip the situation back into being a good situation, hits the big 154, and now the shoe is completely on the other foot, and he can kind of aggro him. And it was still a bit of a dicey fight right there, but again, Sway is so good and so quick at recognizing when a situation is good for him, like pressing this guy who's just absolutely trying to grapple for his life, and then also pushing somebody, uh, or pushing out of a situation and deflecting out of a situation that is absolutely no good for him whatsoever. That's a disgusting kill. <laughs> now the next way, the last way, the fifth way you can improve like face way is practicing the right way. There's such thing as bad practice. I know people think that all playtime is good playtime. But it's the same thing in sports. If you're practicing against somebody who's not at your caliber, who doesn't test you properly, you're not going to improve, and you might actually pick up some bad habits that make you a worse player. Sway right now plays creative and ranked, mostly ranked all day. He's got 330 hours, I believe, played ranked this season. Which, that's absurd, right? And I'm not expecting you guys with full-time jobs or school or lives or girlfriends or boyfriends. To, you don't want to play that much video games. Sway does this for a living. I get that it's not an opportunity for everybody. But with the time he has playing, he plays ranked. And then he also plays a lot of box fights and creative and just fights um, and plays modes basically that kind of test his skills. One thing about Battle Royale, when you're just playing pubs and you're walking around, a lot of the game, you don't actually spend fighting. You literally spend it walking around, moving to zone, pickaxing some trees. The average player who wins might only get, you know, two or three kills per W, which is kind of wild to think about. But realistically, you're spending 25 minutes not getting that much practice when you do that. And so if you want to be like Sway, the number one thing is to practice the right way. And again, it can be hard. It can be discouraging. But it's really good to maintain the right mental um, and not just like always expecting to get the greatest result and to always win. Consider that, you know, if you don't win, you might actually be improving at a lot faster of a pace if you can say, after you lose, what did I do wrong? How did this guy outplay me? How can I respond to this properly in a, in a future situation? And how can I improve? And I think Sway really does that really, really well. And again, he's always testing himself in creative. I don't see him making very many excuses. Whenever he dies, you know, he's always kind of saying, okay, I, I put myself there. And he, he learns for the next time. And I think it's definitely something you can take from his gameplay, apply to your own, and become an even better Fortnite player. Well, that's it for me today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll drop a link down to Sway's channel below. Sway is literally the GOAT of Controller Fortnite. He's been on top of the game for so long, and he's literally the very top right now, playing ranked and being ranked number one for both dubs and for kills, which is insane. For those who don't know, it's extra crazy because it's realistically the fastest way to consistently rank up if you just play for placement. 
placement points are a lot more valuable than kills, especially early game kills. So going for all these kills, taking on all that risk can actually impact the speed at which you can rank up. And so, I don't know. It's just so impressive that Sway's able to do this at such a level, grinding so much and still just absolutely melting kids like this so often. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, have a nice day. Peace.